What's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to be deep diving into a fragrance that has quite a lot of meaning to me. It's part of a project from a very close friend of mine that I'm also in the project of. We're talking about Zed Creators 2.0 and uh, we're talking about my buddy Justin's fragrance. Today, I'm going to be deep diving and give you guys my thoughts on Second Soul. So stay tuned. So, I just have to state this before we jump into this. Yes, Justin is my friend. Yes, George Zaharoff is my friend. Yes, we're in a project together. I'm not going to make up my thoughts. This is genuinely how I feel about this fragrance, which, spoiler alert, I like this as much, if not in some ways, better than my own fragrance because it just speaks to me. So I had to give that little disclaimer because... There's a natural bias here, obviously, because of everyone, all parties involved for me personally. But at the end of the day, you need to experience this yourself. There's many decanters that have purchased bottles to where you can get small decants and try this for yourself. So take my opinion with a grain of salt. It is my genuine thoughts and opinions on this fragrance. But sadly, because of the way some people operate on the Internet, I have to make that statement. So let's take a look at this fragrance. So first things first, let's take a look at this box. You can see reflection. I have not peeled the protective coating on this one. I figured we could do it together. As you can see, an original font, SFP for Stay Fresh Productions, Second Soul, which is another original font, playing off of the same font as Brass and Soul, 120 ml, four ounce. And where's the little peel part? Here we go. So when you get your box, just like when you get a brand new cell phone, they have a protective film for you to peel. There you go. And that's an actual glass mirror. So there's a lot of little details I want to share with you guys. So this piece is an original written by Justin. It's the continuation, the second portion of the song that Justin shared on Brass and Soul. So just as this is the second set of the night, this is the second fragrance in the story. This is his second fragrance with Zaharoff. This is the second part of that original piece that he wrote that's on the Brass and Soul box. So the whole story behind this is he's later in doing the second set of the evening and he finds his second soul from across the room. Obviously, for those of you that don't know, he's talking about Grace. So there was a triple entendre initially with the story and then with the mirror. The mirror has now made it a quadruple entendre because you, yes you, that's getting to see me through this camera, you are the quadruple entendre. You are the second soul. Your reflection dies right. You can see my hats and everything. Like, it's very detailed, you know. And then when you get into here, it's all about the details. So this cloth, because with all the chrome and the mirrors and everything, there was a lot of room for error with people talking about fingerprints. So second soul, Stay First Productions, X is a whore off. A microfiber cloth, custom made, comes with every single order. And then let's take a quick look at this bottle. So there is a protective film that will come on this metal plate. This is actual chrome metal, thick. You can see the thickness of the plate. That will come on here that you have to peel off, just like we did with the mirror. Same thing, you have the second sole engraved into the plate with the SFP. Here on the bottom, which is a little detail that some may overlook, is actually, it's going to be hard to see because of the darkness of the juice, but that's actually a custom-made Zaharoff Fragrance information sticker that has the second soul font on it. Trying to get it to where you guys can see it. Uh, it's hard to see, but all three of them have custom stickers. So this is fingerprint resistant, scratch resistant, not proof, resistant, as is the cap, which is also a chrome reflective metal. And then nice little fun fact, you see that indention? Let me point it out, where is it at, right here. See this little nick? So I actually dropped this bottle and I told Justin, I said, don't sweat it. That'll be the one I take for myself. And where some it might bother to have that, I appreciate the fact that I have this bottle because I'll always have this memory of that moment in time when we were together doing this because of that little nick on my bottle. And then of course, on the side, you have the custom font and print, Stay Fresh Productions, at Zaharoff. I don't know why it's not focusing. There we go. Dark, dark color juice. This is technically three shades lighter than Brass and Soul's juice. It's the same color, 
just three shades darker. Sorry, I might have said lighter at first. It is darker. So it is my scent of the day currently. I do have a fresh spray on my hand that's been on my hand for about 30 minutes. And I'll put the notes on screen for you guys. So the biggest takeaway from this, and I've noticed a lot of people saying this so far, is they smell brass and soul in this DNA. You will smell brass and soul in this DNA. It is an evolution, a true evolution, which I will probably put that in the thumbnail, a true evolution of a fragrance. This is how you flank her, ladies and gentlemen. Any company is paying attention. This is how you flank her. Justin continued a story. He evolved a scent profile to continue a story. I absolutely love that because that's the route I chose to go as well. And I think it was expertly executed with all parties involved because when you smell this one in the opening, you'll get that spicy, aromatic type of feel that you got from Brass and Soul. That freshness. Stay Fresh Productions. You get that freshness. But there's a dark edge, a rough edge to this. More of a refinement in some ways, even though I'm saying rough edge. Because it's a little bit more daring. Not the most daring fragrance, obviously. But when you compare it to Brass and Soul, this steps up the game. This is a little bit more edgy, a little bit more risque in many ways with the scent profile. You'll notice there's a rum on the rocks note. So there's a booziness. There's a lot of darkness here. And on my skin, I get a ton of the suede. That's what I love so much about this fragrance. The smoke, I get some earthiness from tobacco. It's not a big hit of tobacco, but there is a detectable earthy tone that if you sit here and deep dive long enough and spend enough time with it, you will smell the tobacco. Um, and it's one that I don't get a ton of geranium. It just kind of adds a little bit of a bright pop to give that top note some freshness, even though it's in the heart and mid notes of the fragrance. I find you get a little bit of that minty pop up top. The juniper berries is still here, which helps provide that bright aromatic tone to this fragrance without giving so much of a gin hit that you got in Brass and Soul. Whereas this one continues to dry down, it just gets darker, richer. I get that fuzzy suede, that musty, musky type of suede smell. Very smoky as well. That freshness is going to kill over as this thing evolves on your skin. I really can appreciate that. Nuances. Niche perfumery is all about quality and nuances. Telling a story, bringing an experience to the end user. And in this case, I'm the end user, talking to potential other end users. And we'll talk about performance in a little bit because I get ridiculous performance out of this one, but I don't get a ton of the oak moss. It does kind of work in unison with the other earthier tones to this fragrance because there is an earthy nature to it but not so much that I would call it dirty in any way, but it does have a little bit, like I said, a little risque edge to the scent profile. But for me, it's all about light earthiness, boozy, warm, without being really spicy, smoky, and very suede leather dominant on my skin. So I do get a few stages to this fragrance. The deep dry down is all about musk and suede for me. I don't even know if musk is in here. Let me look. No, but there is labdanum, which can also kind of give more of a leathery feel in many ways. And I think that's what it does for this fragrance because the suede is just so dominant. I don't think it's just the suede note. So you get a nice leathery feel. Like I said, that fuzziness. Think, think the rough side of a nice full grain cut of suede. That feeling you get, that texture. You actually can kind of smell the texturing to it a little bit. As strange as that may sound, that's how it comes across to me. I think this was absolutely beautiful. I liked Brass and Soul. I love Second Soul. I just do. Like I said, I like it at least as much as my own creation in Evening Mystique. This is one that during this time of year when it's cooler, even though it was kind of built for the nighttime, based on the story and the darkness of this fragrance, there's still enough freshness here that it's my cup of tea, my style, my taste for the cooler weather when I want something that makes more of a statement. I've been rocking this one. I've worn it a handful of times. Now, of course, I've had many a test sprays over the last month or so. And uh, this is one I encourage you guys. I encourage you to try all three. Um, at the recording of this, there's still bottles available. Like I said, there's decanters out there where you can get a decant and try it because of the limited nature of this. You can't just get a sample from Zaharoff like with the normal, you know, long-term fragrances in the collection. But it's definitely an experience worth having, especially if you're a fan of Justin's. I think a lot of people will really be able to appreciate, especially if you had Brass and Soul, the route that he went with Second Soul. Now on to the good part. So everybody's experience is different. I can tell you firsthand this thing is ridiculously strong siage on Justin Copeland himself. 
I've spent a lot of time with Justin over the last month at the recording of this video. And I've smelled it a lot off of his skin the times he's worn it, the times I've worn it. The sillage is magnificent. I get every bit of 10 to 12 hours on my skin with this one. Longevity is not an issue. It's a 24% parfum. The reason it's not quite 25%, because he told me at 25%, it actually kind of fell flat in the top, which I can totally get because when I was testing Evening Mystique, 22% was really bright and spicy, but the base that I was looking for, that resin dark tone, was, was greatly toned back. So I wasn't getting what I wanted out of the bottom, whereas he wasn't getting what he wanted out of the top. That's where you'd be surprised how 1% change in oil concentration can change how a fragrance is going to be in its composition and the way it reacts and what it really brings out on people. So 24% was perfect for him, for what he was looking for. And based on the story and the scent profile, I'm glad he went this route because you still get a lot of brightness. The projection here is on the heavier side. I wouldn't call it a room filler. Now, if you're the heavy spray type, yeah, you're probably going to fill the room. If you're a moderate spray type like I am in the five to seven range, strong statement maker that doesn't overwhelm. Unmistakable when you walk by that it's you they're smelling. It's got that level of strength without overpowering them. It's not going to punch somebody in the nose when you walk by, but it will lightly tickle their nose as you walk by. And for me, that's kind of what I like. I know I can speak on his behalf with this. Justin's kind of the same way. We want, yeah, sure. It's nice when somebody can smell you, but you don't want to overwhelm somebody. You don't want to put it into the realm of being off offensive and offending someone to where they just, oh, God, he's wearing too much cologne. You don't want to be that guy. At least I don't think you want to be that guy. You may want to be that guy. Who knows? But the sillage is definitely here to stay. It's one that once that projection starts to calm down, because I would call it on the moderate to heavy side in the first two to three hours, then it gets into that moderate to mild sillage, really more of a moderate sillage, to be honest with you, because it never seems to want to kill over to the point to where when I do get a whiff of it, it's not really light. It's got enough oomph to it still to where I believe wherever I'm walking, I have an aura, an aroma lingering a little bit in the air. That's based on my experience. Now, there's no guarantees you'll get the same experience I've had, but I'm pretty confident based on the way this performs and how I've seen it perform on a few other people the performance is not going to be an issue for anyone, and I think it's going to be everything you've desired it to be, especially if you really like what you see in the scent profile. I think you'll really like the performance. Final thoughts on Second Soul. I think Justin and his perfumer, um, I'm almost taken back by it because, like I said, I really like Brass and Soul. I like aromatic and spicy fragrances. That's one of my main types I like to wear on a regular basis because they're so easy to wear and versatile. You don't lose too much versatility here. That's one of the things I can really appreciate about this. It stayed true to the DNA and evolved, greatly evolved. And there's a dark edge. There's more of a sexiness to this. It's less, it's less refined daytime professional worksman and more nighttime couple buttons down having rum on the rocks as what's in here, pun intended. This is a beautiful composition. It's well executed. The storytelling is top notch. The presentation, in my opinion, is the most creative of all three of ours. Yes, mine pops because of the colors. Andrea's is magnificently elegant, but the creativity behind the story and what came from the presentation to tie into the story, I think is the best of the three. It's magnificent. It's absolutely an experience worth having. And I hope anybody that's interested in this gets their nose on it because it's absolutely an experience worth having. Well, that's my thoughts and feelings on my buddy Justin's newest fragrance, Second Soul, in collaboration with the wonderful world of Zaharoff. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. So I do appreciate all the feedback, and I love hearing from you guys. How many of you have already gotten a bottle? What do you think about it? Do you have a similar experience to me? Did it underwhelm you? Did it overwhelm you? I'm curious to see all the feedback. I've been seeing all the different feedback across the internet from so many different people on all three fragrances. On behalf of all of us, thank you guys so much for the support. We're so glad you guys are really digging what we brought to market here. Shout outs to all three perfumers. Shout outs to George Zahara for the opportunity and the freedom to create that was given to us because it's not lost on us. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on Second Soul and you give it a spray now, I'm pretty damn confident you'll thank me later because it's awesome. Have a good one, guys.